President, Deputy President, Minister Natim Tetwa, all ministers present here, Deputy Ministers and MECs present here, members of parliament and members of the provincial legislature, executive mayors and mayors present here, councillors, members of parliament, leaders of various youth organizations present here, members and all our friends from the media, invited guests, Batu Balimpopo Kamoka, Rerata or Olena, Rer Abshin, Machero, Tobe, Slojile, Mandrebele, okay, Natis Corner, Sata Livis again for all. Honorable President, the people of this province, this beautiful province, Limpopo, would want me to start first by expressing their appreciation to the national government under your leadership for choosing Limpopo as a host for this very important celebration. I deliberately call it a celebration, President, because it is indeed a celebration. The significance of the Youth Day cannot be overemphasized. We are here to pay tribute to successive generations of young people who rejected oppression and fought for our national liberation. That therefore has to be celebrated. We pay tribute to the courageous and fearless 1976 generation of young people. Today, we are reminded of the extraordinary courage and sacrifices of the past generation of young people. The bravery and selflessness of the 1976 youth generation reminded us that there is no power greater than human determination. We are reminded that the lifespan of any unjust system is determined by the oppressed people themselves. It is the oppressed people who, through their actions or inactions, will determine whether the oppressive system continues or is abolished. The 1976 generation was not prepared to allow the injustices of apartheid to continue. They vowed to bring down apartheid during their lifetime. They were prepared to die so that you will not have to struggle against an inferior education, which was designed to make them perpetual slaves in the land of their own, or the land of their own, their birth. They died so that you can no longer be restricted by draconian legislation and repressive policies in realizing, realizing your full potential. We therefore expect that the young people of today assume the same courage and determination in confronting the challenges of today. Central amongst the challenges of today is the issue of youth unemployment youth health, and issues around the abuse of, of alcohol and drugs. This is a new struggle which must be fought and won by the young people themselves. As government, we are here to offer all the necessary support. Unlike the generation of 1976, you are not on your own. You have a government which cares and a government that listens to you. Program Director and Honorable President, I want to say that our youth are our, our youth, the youth of our country are our greatest resource. 
because each and every one of you as the young people of this country has a God-given ability and talents to contribute towards our your, your own efforts to create a better life for everyone in this country. What you simply have to understand is that you are not a generation of 1976. You are a unique generation, most of you born after our freedom and democracy. In this way, you have your own unique set of challenges. It was Franz Fanon who said that each generation must discover its mission, fulfill, fulfill it or betray it. And uh, in relative op uh, opacity, close quote, I know that you have defined your mission as economic freedom in your lifetime. The question, however, is not whether you have discovered your mission. The real question is whether you have the ability and willingness to fulfill your discovered mission. To answer this question, you must first answer another question. What are the things that will make it possible or impossible or even difficult for you as a generation of young people to achieve or, at, or attain your mission. Once you have identified such, such possible impediments or obstacles, you must then adopt a collective strategy to deal with such challenges. From where we are, some of the possible obstacles to your success as a generation are the issues of alcohol and substance abuse, teenage sex and pregnancy, laziness and, and the demon of easy car. I can assure you that economic freedom will remain a distant dream if you do not confront these challenges head on. Program Director, my twin task was simply to officially open the day's activity and welcome all of you. I therefore want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you, but in, in, in particular, I would want to welcome the president of this country, what I always called, or should I say what we always called, as a province, a son of the soil, the real son of the soil. <laughs> I want to say to you, President, you are welcome to this land of your forefathers, this land of your own ancestors. You are welcome to the land of uh, legions, the, well, the land of Mtate Pala, the land of Pitam Kaba, the land of Alfios Maliva, the land of Samson Popey and many others. We want to welcome you and therefore wish to take this opportunity and say to all of you, ministers, deputy ministers, mayors, and everybody who's here, MECs from various provinces, Lea Moreji, you are welcome. Feel free. Dimpia Garnacho, Renovarnalita, Umar de Guapalabor. Thanks very much uh, to the Honorable Premier for that uh, warm way of welcome to the President, who's the real son of the soil who comes from this beautiful province of ours, Limpopo. Hala, hala, Limpopo, hala, hala! Eta, President Cyril Ramaphosa, eta! Use chola ganjane! Mauze ne koneni! We are the future! No one can stop us! Thank you very much. I think young people, who are, we want to call upon you to really exercise maximum discipline. 
because we can't really come here and commemorate the generation of 1976 and when our leaders are speaking here and we are making noise at the back there. I've been observing all of you. Please refrain from doing that. Let us make, make sure that we live here with a clear message from our leaders. Are we together? Thank you very much. Uh, without any waste of time, I'm going to call upon to the podium the chairperson of the National Youth Development Agency, Mr. Sfiso Tsomtsweni, to come and render the message of support. It was those young people 
who changed the course of history that today we celebrate and commemorate this particular democracy of our country. The theme of today, President, is 25 years of democracy, a celebration of youth activism. There are many people, President, who say to us, we have nothing to celebrate. We want to say today, we have a lot to celebrate. Because a young person who's 25 years old today is a young person that was born under a government of Nelson Mandela. And that particular young person, President, was taken care of by government when they were still in their mother's womb. Because this government understood that many parents, particularly fathers, they leave pregnant mothers, they run away. This government started to take care of young people when they were still in their mother's womb. Because a pregnant woman in this country can access a clinic, can access a government hospital. When a child is born president, because the father ran away, this government says, yes, a grant for you to be raised by this government. When you go to school, this government says to you, study for free. They even give you food for you to study. Up until you reach grade 12, there was a smaller than a problem. When you resolve that problem, you can go and study in any university. So, as young people of this country, we have a lot to celebrate, President, and we take this opportunity to salute the generation of 1976. We also take this opportunity to celebrate the life and times of Comrade Peter Mukawa, who today could have been 60 years old. Peter Mukawa inspired many young people. Peter Mukawa, even in his grave, he continues to live on. When we talk, we talk through Peter Mukawa. We talk through the spirit of Peter Mukawa. For as long as we are still alive, Peter Mukawa will never die. This year is also 40 years of the Congress of South African Students, which was launched in 1979. But also, President, this year marks 10 years of the NYTA. Indeed, President, the NYTA has gone through a period. Of course, when we started, President, we might have had problems there and there. But today, the NYTA is a well-oiled machine. It's a well-run institution. We're getting clean audits. We're employing proper people. The NYTA has the youngest CEO in this country. And we're calling on companies to follow suit. The NYTA has set the example. President, last year when we stood here, we asked you, President, we said young people are unemployed in this country. And the problem is not that jobs are not there. When you open newspapers every day, there's jobs that are advertised. But the problem with those jobs is that they are designed to keep young people outside. They tell us that you need five years experience. You need ten years experience. How are you supposed to get experience when you are 21 years old? If they tell you that you must have ten years experience when you are 21, it means you must have started working at the age of 11. Thank you very much, President Ramaphosa. You have removed experience as an entry level pilot. And President, since you have spoken, you are the highest authority in this country. When President says experience must be removed as an entry level requirement, we expect experience to be removed. We don't want to see entry level jobs. They tell us that they want a receptionist. A receptionist for the five years. No, 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 no. You must only know how to answer your phone and transcribe your life office. So, all those particular jobs, that experience must be removed. Honorable President, we have indeed taken a lot of strides, President. We have assisted a lot of young people. We have extended the hand the back of young people who are doing it for themselves. Young people who were mentored and assisted by the NYTA. But we think the time has come, Mr. President, that the budget of the NYTA must be increased for us to reach every single young person in this country. We can't only assist a few people. Many young people are crying. When they see others being assisted, they are saying, when are you coming to us? We have started opening offices in rural areas because NYTA must be where young people are. You cannot have young people traveling to the NYTA. The NYTA must travel to where young people are.
other hand, we have given provinces stimulus package, and we want to take this opportunity to appreciate the province of KZN, to appreciate the province of Eastern Cape, which has offered us more than 50 million rands for the grant program. So young people of the Eastern Cape, our sweet Hayesa, the Premier has given us, and this one is a challenge to Kumatawata, that you can show it home, 50 million is too small, I'm sure you Mpopo can come in and ensure that it has income. We also want to appreciate municipalities that have given us space to have offices. We want to particularly single out the metros that are working with us, the metros of Ekuruleni that have assisted us as young people, President of Salga, Fulana Masango, let municipalities work with the NYTA so that the NYTA assist young people. But also, President, as we close, the NYTA has been able to assist young people and we take accountability for those young people who still feel that they have not really been assisted. And we want to say to you today, for the next 10 years, the NYTA is going to be a mini machine. The NYTA will be a household name. The NYTA will be your best friend as a young person because your best friend has to be the NYTA. As a father, Thank you very much, for that vibrant message of support from the NYTA. Can we clap hands for him? Indeed, he did not leave any stone unturned.